Sometimes it's enough to clean up the messy world of multimodal AI datasets to achieve a new state-of-the-art model. We'll have a look at the new MMICL paper, Empowering Vision Language Model with Multimodal In-Context Learning, by researchers from China and the University of Washington. Instead of focusing on simple image-to-text tasks, such as image captioning or visual question answering, this paper wants to design a model that performs very strongly in more complex and real-world multi-model scenarios with interleaved image and text. We can here, for example, see a case where the user is asking the AI to describe this image of the cat, directly referencing elements of the original image using parts of that image itself. Or here, we are asking the AI to logically connect two different images, which is very different from just looking at one image and answering a question. Taking this one step further, we can also see how the model can understand the temporal relationship between images when looking at frames of a video, but it can also very well grasp the intricate text to image references, meaning it knows which images are image 0, 1, 2 and 3. Now, how does the model architecture look like? Well, the main contribution, at least in my opinion, is the new dataset that we'll get to in a second. So the model architecture itself is really not too new. It's the same as in Blip2. Maybe I should make a full video on the Blip2 paper, don't you think? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, back to the model architecture. We have a frozen image encoder, like a VAT, which generates image features. Those image features are then passed through a Q-format and fully connected layer to convert the image features to a visual prompt, meaning to align and project those such that they can be interpreted by the frozen LLM. Now, that's Blip2. The thing with Blip2 is that by design, the input image can only be placed in the beginning, but MMICL wants to have complex interleaved image and text sequences. Its tiny modification is to simply use this visual prompt generator block, again, the image encoder, Qformer, and projection layer for each image and just nest in those visual prompts into the sequence of language tokens. To make it even clearer to the model how to differentiate the images, the authors pre-process the input to specify which image, or rather its visual prompt, is called image zero, which is called image one, and so on. Okay, and how is the model trained? It is trained in two stages, one pre-training and one fine-tuning stage. The first stage is for the model to acquire vision language knowledge using datasets with aligned image text pairs, such as the Lion 4 million dataset. We want to train our vision to language translation block. The only learnable or unfrozen blocks hereby are the Qformer and the projection layer. Since the authors again just follow the pre-training steps in Blip2 and use the exact same backbone models, i.e. the same frozen image encoder, a vision transformer, and frozen LLM, FLAN T5XL or XXL, they go as far as additionally just using the already perfectly pre-trained Qformer and projection layer. This means that the authors effectively don't train their model in the first stage of training. They just skip it. Now, for the second stage of training, the multimodal in context tuning, they actually do train their model, or rather, certain parts. Inspired by the Laura paper, the authors unfreeze the learnable key and query mapping and again unfreeze the projection layer. The idea behind unfreezing the key and query mapping vectors is to better adapt the LLM to the multimodal context with multiple images. Remember, the LLM was only pre-trained on language. So in the end, that is their model architecture and training pipeline. They have the interleaved input data, use the blip2 pre-trained modules, and fine-tune the projection layer and query and value vectors of the LLM on the standard next token prediction objective. Up until now, there's nothing too crazy. It's not the first time that a model was trained to deal with multiple images as input. Just look at the Flamingo and Cosmos 1 models. The datasets used in Flamingo and Cosmos 1 were scraped from the web, where the images and text are interleaved but don't necessarily have a connection. The reason why MMICL in general performs better than other baselines, including Flamingo and Cosmos 1, 
is the MIC dataset that they built. This dataset is comprised of 11 tasks and 33 different datasets. The gray datasets here are the ones actually used for fine tuning and the yellow ones are held out to evaluate generalization. Those datasets are adapted to contain interleaved images and text with explicit image references, i.e. direct nested visual prompts with associated textual references. In the written text prompt, an image can then be referred to in natural language by image J. For example, in a visual question answering problem, the prompt template looks like this. We tell the model that image one in natural language is associated with the visual prompt or image token of the actual image one. We repeat this for every input image and then append the actual question and answer sequence. A prompt template for a more complex multi-image in context format would look something like this. In the end, the authors try to convert most datasets into a vision language question answering format. Now, that's how the dataset looks like. But how is it constructed? Well, such a prompt template with instructions is manually created for every dataset that is used to construct the entire MIC dataset. The authors then use ChatGPT to rewrite 10 diverse instructions that essentially all describe the same key characteristics of the task. Those generated instructions are then once again manually reviewed. Okay, the templates are now set. The authors now fill the actual input content into the template to generate the final dataset in a unified format. I'm here assuming that they have scripts to do that automatically instead of doing all that manually. So we now have our newish model design and the final puzzle piece, the new MIC dataset. How does this novelty translate into evaluation numbers? Well, MMICL on average outperforms pretty much all other baselines. For example, here is the cognition evaluation on the MME benchmark, where each image will have two questions with answers restricted to yes and no. On average, looking across all categories, MMICL performs the best, and that by a decent margin. But if we look closely, MMICL isn't the best at common sense reasoning, nor at numerical calculation, nor code reasoning. It's not the worst, but not the best either. The only category it dominates quite significantly is the text translation category. I find this interesting because I feel like translation abilities should mainly come from the LLM pre-training, but since MMICL and Blip2 have pretty much the same LLM backbone, it's just interesting to see how much better MMICL is. Please let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below or join the Discord server to discuss this topic and much more. Now, if you look at the evaluation of the different recognition categories of the MME benchmark, we see a similar result. MMICL is, in fact, never the best at one category, but across all, on average, it has the highest score. You could say a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. What I find more fascinating is that MMICL apparently outperforms Flamingo and Cosmos 1 on zero and few shot vision language evaluations. That said, the comparison might not be the fairest if you look at pure parameter count, because flanty 5 xl has about 3 billion parameters and XXL has about 11 billion, whereas Cosmos 1 has about 1.6 billion. There are many more tables, but there is one final one I want to discuss that is actually really interesting. This table shows zero-shot performance of different vision language models on the ScienceQA image dataset. But the twist here is that the authors split this dataset into two different versions. One where the answers actually require the visual information, like images of graphs or tables, and one where the images are not important. They did that to evaluate the common language bias of vision language models. This bias describes the fact that all other baseline models perform much better in the split that does not require the visual information and only requires text. Instruct blip performs over 20 percentage points better when it doesn't need to evaluate an image. MMICL, on the other hand, successfully almost completely alleviates this language bias. So yeah, overall this model performs really well, even though the novelty or new idea is fairly straightforward, at least in my opinion. 
Since you now know how the new dataset and new input definition results in overall new state-of-the-art performance, you can see that sometimes a high-quality and thought-through dataset can be enough to beat the competition. We compared the LMICL model to DeepMind's Flamingo model, which I personally also find really interesting and powerful, considering it is almost one year old and still one of the best models. You can watch my Flamingo explanation video by clicking right here. It is a classic paper for people interested in multi-mode learning, so I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Bye!